Thanks again for tuning back into the channel. In this week's video, we are going to be looking at using Camera Raw to finish an image. And in particular, we're going to be looking at using profiles, and in this case, a black and white profile, to finish the image. Not all composites or images, as you know, photographs work in color. And sometimes, once you create an image that you don't like, but perhaps there's something just in it that you need to bring out, like in this image in particular, the colour did not suit it. After taking the time and creating the northern lights and everything within the image, I felt that it was too vibrant and I, I could have simply toned down the image and toned down the colours and edited it from there. But I felt it would have worked better in black and white. And so this week's video is the process I went through to get the final image. Let's dive right in. The main objective for this is just to decide where the starting point will be. And for me, it's in camera raw. And I've just went through some of the profiles and I'm now crushing the blacks because I don't want it too contrasty with this image. From here, I'm just basically setting up the starting point and adding a few masks. We've added a slight edit in here just to bring the face up and to illuminate the face further. I'm quite happy for the rest of it to be like that. I now just want to try and balance it out. So how I normally do this is I use radials and linear gradients quite a bit. And that's simply because of the nice drop off with them. So if I do this and just take it over her face, and I'm not even going to clip this to her face as an intersecting width. I just want to eliminate that slightly further, just to about there. That I'm happy with. I'm also going to do it in here, but what I'm going to do with it is radial gradient again. And I know that that's fine texture there, so I want to increase the texture. And sometimes when you increase the texture, the contrast increases as well. So let's just increase the texture there and there. And let's just draw this in. Just take it down there. And if I flick this on and off, hopefully you will see the difference. Maybe if I increase it even further, you'll see the difference, yes. So... I only want subtle edits. So you can see that that's in there as well. Now another couple of areas that I want to increase the light in is down in the sod. So that's there. Create mask, brush. And again, my settings are feather at 51, 4. Let's take the flow up to about 60. And the density to about 60 as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click once in the sod. Hold down shift and click again and that will draw me a straight line. Click once in the sword, draw down there and that's a straight line as well. This I am going to increase the exposure on. And the reason I'm doing that is because every time I'm working in here, the brighter the area, the more our eyes are going to be tend to draw into it. So it even leads up that way as well. The first thing you look at in this image, if you look away and then look back, hopefully you should see her and then lead up to the spirit guide so let's do that let's uh, just increase some contrast as well to the contrast back now this is a very subtle edit i'm not looking for too much with it either i also want to increase in here and again that's a new brush and again i'm just going to lift the exposure slightly i'm leaving the flow and density at 60 and i'm just going to paint in there perhaps down there a tiny bit now i don't want to paint in here and the simple reason for that is so that i have contrast between the lighter and darker areas because i'll get more effect if we have that now if i increase the exposure you'll see how much i've actually worked into that image again that's too much there so let's subtract from that let's show the overlay and let's subtract. If I take that to 100, take that to 100, I'm still in the arrays. It disappears very quickly. So let's take them back now 
62, 65, 66. Now we're just going to look for other areas that we want to highlight and again we are going to create a new mask and this time we're going to do it with a brush. I'm going to turn the exposure up just slightly, not much at all. The highlights up just slightly. Perhaps in there. Remembering each time that I paint on here I have the ability to adjust the settings and I started with these already preset just so that I could visually see what was going to happen and any other areas let's paint once in there again perhaps over there giving more definition to this area got a tiny bit down the hand keeps us down here take the brush down in size click once hold down shift and that's Eliminated that area and I'll take a wee bit in here now. I'm just painting quite liberally over here and it's just so that it holds us in here. Everything looks okay so far. So I'm going to zoom out for the final edit and this is going to be a radial gradient. And I'm going to zoom out and what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to draw up like that and draw over the entire image. I'm then going to get into the radial gradient and invert it. So you can see it's only affecting here. So yes, you can guess I'm creating a vignette. So I'm going to bring it back in so that I can see what's happening. And I'm going to turn it down slightly. Just not as much, not too much, should I say. Just a bit there. And what I can also do, because I've cre created the vignette, I can change the axis of it. So I can rotate that. You'll see it affecting it all the way through. But I can rotate the axis of this. And it allows me more latitude than the basic vignette that you can add in Lightroom. That I'm quite happy with. So I'm going to add one final mask and this is going to be a linear gradient and I'm going to start it there and bring it down there and then just drag it off to the bottom. So now that I've dragged that down there, I'm going to get down to, you'll see colour is down here. Remember if you're doing this in Lightroom, if you scroll down and you see the word basic down here, it means you're then going into a global edit, which means any edits you make affect the entire image. In Camera Raw, it's only local editing or global if you're in the edit panel. But right now, I'm applying, I'm going to apply a global edit to the entire image. And that's simply because I created a linear gradient. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get into colour. And I'm going to choose a colour for this. Now, this is what it looks like before that and then after that. For the purposes of this video, I am going to delete that mask just so that we have this, just so that I can show you one final thing. And I'm going to click OK. So we went from the colour to the monochrome to a tinted version. Now, perhaps you think that you want some colours to come back through and you can mask it back in and that is perfectly okay for this so I could get back in here and add some of these back in and just do some spot colouring spot colouring for me though is not one of my favourite techniques and although I'm saying that I'm doing this with this image let's just add some colour into the hair and you can see that that's bringing that back through. For the purposes of this video, I'll leave it at that. So this is the final result, and I did prefer it with a slight touch of spot colouring towards the top. Hopefully you get something from that, because videos like this, I'm always slightly hesitant about putting out there. 
But at the same time, I'm always thinking, maybe show you different techniques that you've never ever thought of. So I do hope you get something from it. This will be the last video of 2024 and I just like to say thank you once again for taking the time to watch some of these videos and I hope you get something from them. Thanks again for watching. All the best for 2025 when it comes and I'll see you in the new year.